All right, this is a demonstration of this 2,1 MacBook running El Capitan. So let's go to about this Mac and give it a second to load. So this is a 13-inch late 2006 with the 2 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, 2 gigabytes of RAM and the Intel GMA 950 with 64 megabytes of shared VRAM. The display is the 1280 by 800 um, display and the storage we have the super drive which surprisingly still works which is kind of weird because the super drive in my 2010 Mac mini has totally died and we have the stock 80 gigabyte SATA disk the RAM we have two one gigabyte sticks so two gigabytes of RAM which is the minimum requirement to run El Capitan so how did I get El Capitan to install on this Mac? And I just want to kind of warn you a little bit because you will be potentially looking at a blank desktop for a couple of minutes, so I apologize for that because I, no, I have nothing really to show. Um, but it was actually an easy process. Well, the second part was an easy process. I use this patcher right here. It's called OSX Patcher. It's on GitHub and you can find it. You can clone it and you can um, actually do this uh, if you want. Um, and so why am I saying the second part was, was really easy? Because the first part, which is actually obtaining the installer image, was a bit ridiculous. Um, now, what I had to do was I tried using, uh, this was a couple months ago before I had even started this project, I tried using the El Capitan install image that I had on my server, um, and I tried to install that on my 2010 Mac Mini, and it didn't work, and it said the image couldn't be verified. So that means probably the image was out of date. So I had to figure out then how to re-download El Capitan. Now, I mean, it might sound incredibly easy. You just go to the Apple support website to download old versions of Mac OS, and then you find the appropriate installer. But I had tried it on my main machine, which is an Apple Silicon Mac. So I was able to download it fine, but when I went to install it, it did not work because it's an Apple Silicon Mac. Then I had to try to get it on my 5 comma 1. Uh, this was actually a week ago that I tried to do this and it worked and then um, I kind of abandoned the project until today and then I went to my 5 comma 1 to check if the install image was still on there and it somehow got deleted. So then what I had to do was in, uh, get it on my 2010 Mac Mini and it was incredibly slow, and it took a very long time to download, even over Ethernet. Um, and then what I had to do, so after that, I had to copy the install image, the 6 gigabyte image, over a USB 2 connection. And oh my lord, was it slow. And then uh, I had to get that onto the um, 2 comma 1 MacBook. So it was... It took a long time, right? Then what I had to do was build the patched version. So I actually took a USB 3 drive. Not that that would make things any faster, but I just figured that would... Um, it, it actually ended up making things quite a bit faster because the SanDisk uh, snap drives that I have are extraordinarily slow. So I figured I'd just pull out my USB 3 drive and, and do it, and it, and it worked fine. So building the installer from USB 2 port on a USB 3 drive took around half an hour, so it wasn't bad. Um, and it has to build the patch version, it has to do all that. Um, so it wasn't really, you know, it was not a hard process. I just kind of left and, and came back, you know, in about half an hour was finished. Now... Then I went to reboot. It worked just as expected. I went to reboot it, and it booted right into the installer. I was able to get the installer. Now, the preparing phase took an hour 
which was the longest I've ever seen. I checked the installer log multiple times. I watched an entire House of Moth stream as I was doing it. So, you know, at least I had um, something to do with it. I wasn't just watching it, but it did take a very long time um, to to kind of prepare. And the installation didn't take that long. It took maybe, maybe 15 minutes, um, so it wasn't terrible. Now... Then what happened was I went to do the post install patch and I used the folder. Um, I can show you the folder that I used. Um, so it was actually this that I used in the patch. Um, no, it was not in there. It was in, yes, it was patch.sh. And I tried to run that since I stole the file on my desktop. This all of these files actually still come from the, the previous installation, so I didn't do a clean install, I did an upgrade. And so all these files come from the clean, uh, the, uh, the old uh, 10.7 Lion version. Um, so what I had to do, I, I tried running it from here, thinking it would work, and now I'm just thinking on it right now, and it, you know, it's obvious that it didn't work, because this is running off Macintosh HD right here. So then what I had to do was build it again and recopy the OSX patch, which is in a big file, but over USB 2, it copies very slow. Um, and then I had to get that onto the flash drive. Then what I realized is that the USB ports, which are obviously, you know, to make matters so much worse, right next to each other, my USB drives are too wide for two things to be plugged in at the same time, but I needed that because I needed one USB drive, my slow SanDisk, as the um, one that was hosting the patch so that I could do the patch like on what would look at as an external drive, which would be Macintosh HD. Uh, and then I had to boot into the recovery partition off the, the uh, 32 gigabyte USB 3 drive. So it ended up working. I was able to like jankily place the sand disk like halfway in the USB port and it worked fine and I was able to do it. But what happened actually uh, when I tried to run it off the desktop, is it kept kernel panicking and, you know, it was in a boot loop, basically. So it was doing a boot loop, and, and I thought I was kind of screwed. I don't know what happened, and, and then I ended up trying that again, and it worked. So that is the story behind that. Sorry for the very long explanation, but I um, figured that might help you. And I don't know if I refer referenced this before, but these steps were provided by the video. I can't remember the guy's name, um, but he did a video a couple months ago about running this on a 2006 iMac, and I did not know that was possible, so I thought I'd try it on here. So let's take a look at Activity Monitor. We can see the RAM is running very efficiently at only 1.3 gigabytes used. But if we, you know, try to run... Uh, so, well, so here's the CPU. Oh, this is weird. I don't know why this is happening. Oh, there we go. Okay, so here's our CPU. It's maxed out. We don't have the ability to do GPU because for some reason El Capitan doesn't do that. Um, but, like, if we try to run, you know, Google Chrome or anything, and this launchpad is taken ages to show up so I'm not even going to try because it's been like almost 15 seconds and it hasn't even shown up yet well that's a bit of a problem well that's what you get with only having 64 megabytes of VRAM I guess um, okay so we clearly can't get into launchpad which is unfortunate um, but, you know, whatever. So that is this MacBook. Now, I really thought I would be able to show you, like, Google Chrome at least trying to run on this, but I can't even get the spotlight. Oh, there, oh, there, there we go. 
or a spotlight. Except Google Chrome's going to need to verify, so never mind. Um, all right. That's really all I've got, unfortunately. Now I just realize that I can't really do anything. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Maybe if you've got an old 2006 Mac or 2007 Mac, which I think all 2007 Macs are supported, or most of them are, under El Capitan. But if you don't, try this. Now, I don't think this is this is going to work on a on a 1, 1. So, like, this wouldn't work on a core duo or core solo or any of that because it's, you know, solely 32-bit. This is 32 and 64 with 32-bit firmware, which ended up getting patched. That was a really big problem. And why? That's really the only reason why this is not supposed to be able to boot anything more than 10.7 Lion. Well, also with the graphics, because you can see there's no GPU acceleration. So that is this video for you. Uh, I hope it was helpful, like I said.